Surely you've heard of a five-step plan before. You've probably also heard of a 12-step plan to deal with alcoholism or other drug-related treatments. But have you ever heard of a 39-step plan? No? Well, neither have I, because that sounds absolutely dreadful. Who would want to take that many steps just to try and deal with just about anything? So don't take the 39-step plan. Take this shortcut. But wait, how does that pertain to this game? You'll find out shortly. Actually, it'll take quite a while, but you'll find out. Hiya folks, Free and Doggy here. I am going to be trying a Let's Play of a game I have <coughs> that I'm not really sure how it'll actually play out. I'm not sure how it'll even play on my side, let alone as a recording, because it's the 39 steps, and as that little icon on the side says, it's a digital adaptation of John Buchanan's espionage thriller, so it seems to be pretty, uh, shall we say, visual novel heavy? So I'll see how it works out. I did a simple test recording, <coughs> seemed like it would work out alright, volume wise. And as I was trying to put in my name, it won't take a full 12 letters, so I'm going fruit and doggy, uh, what's the word? Uh, it's not just audioly. There's another way to describe it. But anyways, gonna get through this. <coughs> Excuse me. And they went for a very creative control scheme. Instead of just clicking through or hitting the inner bar, you rotate your mouse to move through text. I have never heard of that in my entire life. And it's pretty straightforward. Rotate, you hit a diamond, then you left click. Yep, so when I see a mouse cursor, I can interact. <coughs> so, I'm kind of wondering if the game went with the idea where they put in enough of these interactive modes, different things you can read and interact with to make it a game as opposed to simply a visual novel, click, 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 click. Anyways. Benin's Bank. Dear Mr. Hane, welcome to England. I hope your journey from Rhodesia was not too arduous. Would you like to come to the bank and we can discuss matters regarding your Rhodesian mining shares? If you could please make an appointment with my clerk, Mr. Scout, on Temple 6733. Yours sincerely, Mr. Edward Ainsley, manager of Benin's Bank. Now I will say, that signature does not read as Edward Ainsley in my world, but anyways. That's all there was here. This is just a simple tutorial. <coughs> Pardon. Yep, our short tutorial. Got an award for it. 15 more of them. I'll start the game shortly, and there's different little things I can do to get through it, such as right-clicking to go to the main menu, which is actually quite nice. I love that name. The Wrong Ditch. It's called a 39 step, so 8, 12, 13, 14. That's 19. Those are 19 steps, good sir. Wrong ditch. Richard Hane is living in London, England. He yearns for a more interesting life. Don't we all? Alright, let's play it out. Are we done bing bonging? Am I supposed to be doing? Huh. I returned from a city on the May afternoon pretty well disgusted to my life. Boy, I, I feel so relatable. I had been three months in the old country and was fed up with it. The old country or the city? Because I'd be fed up with any city. Because cities suck. I'm a rural person, small town country boy. I mean, so many people rag on us country I folk. You've got into the wrong ditch, my friend, and you had better climb out. There's a right ditch? What the? The pr I, Is that supposed to be career? I gotta start with the child. 
My father had brought me up from Scotland to South Africa at the age of six, and I had never been home since. I grew up in the Cape Colony, which was then under British rule. So I'm guessing that's the father. No, that's the child. No, I left it. I spent much of my time by the Zambezi, where I would fish. There are several hundred species in its water, including the infamous tigerfish and Zambezi sark. The, <coughs> the wide open spaces of the Veld. What the heck is a Veld? Also interested me greatly in the various methods of survival in such an uncompromising landscape. But yeah, seriously, that expression that was earlier in the story suggested there is a right ditch. It's a ditch. You never want to go in the ditch. There's no such thing as the right or good ditch to get into. I had earned my pile. Not one of the big ones, but good enough for me. Well, how would you want a pile of anything? I put in three years prospecting for copper in German Damaraland and spoke the German tongue pretty fluently. Hey, humble brag, right? I went on to become a mining engineer in Kimberley, where I was instrumental to the formation of D. Beers Consolidated Mines. Hey, he is German. The diamond mines were a rough business with countless good men lost in horrific accidents. But I'm complaining about my life. <laughs> uh, the soldier. I served the British forces during the Montebello conflict and was decorated for my role. I served two years with the Imperial Light Horse. Light Horse? And was an intelligence officer at Delagoa Bay in the Second Boer War. I lost many friends during those wars. But again, I'm complaining about my lousy life. Not those people who died in the mines of the wars. My final years, <coughs> my final years in Africa were in the municipality of Bulawayo, where I fought during the Matabel War. I decided once again with my father, who had taken ill. After he died, I decided to leave the Cape and head back to the old country. Which, based on the lines of the map, down here to the Cape and then back up, yeah. The present, which is really the past. Hey, I got an award. A lot of imperialist ladies asked me to tea to meet schoolmasters from New Zealand. New Zealand, and there's from Vancouver, and that was the most dismal business of all. Wait, what? Have tea with the schoolmasters. Oh, how dismal. I had no real pal to go about with, which probably explains things. No, it doesn't! Plenty of people invited me to their houses, but they didn't seem much interested in me. What's with this whining? Good grief! They weren't interested in me. I was just a young lad drinking tea. I'd counted on stopping in London for the rest of my days, but from the first, I was disappointed with it. I was the best bored man in England. So you're the best man who's also bored? Or the best of the boring? No, that's not how I mean it. Out of all the men who could possibly be bored in all of England, you were the best at being bored because you were the most bored. That's what I was trying to say. Okay, I'm done with all that. So Richard Hannay is a big crybaby. Here was I, 37 years old, sound in wind and... Uh, you sound pretty sound in wind, all right. And limb with enough money to have a good time, yawning my head off all day. My oh, man, play this guy's violin, guys. Sheesh. Wait. Oh, I'm doing stuff. Maybe. I had a long drink and read the evening papers. They were full of the row in the Near East, and there's an article about... Carolitis, the Greek premier. From all accounts, he seemed the one big man in the show, and he played a straight game too, which is more than they could be said for most of them. I don't know what kind of show they're referring to, but okay. <clears throat> poker, based on the hint of the poker table. Yeah, but mur 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 da da ha Yes, that's very nice. Good. Well, um, have you read the new book about the weather? Yes. Someone had loaded in cylinder... Cylinder player. Play that cylinder! 
I felt a deep nostalgia for my homeland of Scotland as Annie Laurie filled the room. As only a woman can, right? That sounded really weird, but he said it first. Oh, I can interact with things. Uh, I don't see anything that's glowing, though. Oh, ho ho, the map! Of course. Yes, I see. The Dominion of Canada. Very interesting. Why are they red? I have no idea. The British Empire map of the world. <clears throat> well, good for you, Britain. Oh, okay, there's two yellows. So I found one, whoa. That was a thing? I was just clicking it. I didn't think that was an actual thing. Presented to Richard Hannay, Intelligence Office, Matabel War, 1897, Soldier of the British Empire. That was all... I, I thought it said things would glow. I must be lying to myself. Newspapers. Hey, a restaurant. Miss Therese Larray. Hey. Maxim? What kind of paper are you getting, good sir? Bushy hearts. The hardiest of bushes. I don't think that's what that means, but it's what I said. <clears throat> yes, very English, very good. About six o'clock, I went home. Okay, good for you. None of this means anything to me, but, you know. New Cavendish Street? Hey! I've heard good things! Compared to old Cavendish Street. My flat was the first floor in a new block behind Langham Place. By, oh, my bad. I was trying to rotate when it was time to click. There was no restaurant or anything of that sort. And each flat was quite shut off from the others. Well, good. Don't you want privacy? Oh, I tried to click and it's like, no! I'll examine before ascending. Ha, there's me. Oh, what? Show text. I am not even going to try to read that. Dear Richard, how is London? I do hope Paddock is looking after you well and that your luck on the horses is lasting out. So he's a horse gambler? 10-1 it is. I'm taking he means October 1st? Now here's a tale for you. Last month in the Kalahari, I found myself in a tight spot. After two days on the plane, I lost my way and could not find the river. I was forced to go without water for three days. And if I were that a morsel of food save for a few Mopane worms, an excellent source of protein, which steered me away from starvation. How do you lose a river? Uh, then I ran into an old chief to whom I owed money. What? Because of my debt, he refused to help me. So I had to continue on my feet. Okay. The desert is not kind to any man. But I made it out and a man in Tanganyak... Tanganyika sold me a Rhodesian Ridgeback, like a hog, which will be my partner in my future hunts. I'm guessing more of a dog than a hog, but it sounds like a... I have named the animal Shaka after the old Zulu chief, and will take him to the Congo with me where I go for the elephants. I plan to leave next week if I can get my new rifle finished in time. Yours, Peter Pinar. Yeah, very good, Pinar. Very good indeed. Uh, would there be a reason to re-examine? Oh wait. Oh, never mind. I'll take that as a hard no, yeah? And then I'll open my house door! Ha ha! Draw the symbols as they appear. Up. 
up. I didn't know I had. You have to push the mouse button down, the left pointer. I was just doing it freehand without holding it at first. But then I found the air. Oh. That's me home. I'll be heading out for dinner. But you just got home. The very first words I read I hate servants. <laughs> oh my gosh. I hate servants on the premises. So I, <coughs> so I had a fellow to look after me who came in by the day. He arrived before 8 o'clock every morning and used to depart at 7, for I never dined at home. Man, what a rough life you lead, boy -o. Am I... am I doing things? It's not always altogether clear if I'm waiting or able to do something. Why did you... You're going right back the way you came from? What? That evening I dined at the Cafe Royale and then headed elsewhere for entertainment. I'm starting to hate this person. I went to ask for dinner, then I looked somewhere for people to entertain me. How dreadful this London is. Mm. In evenings in the tent. Leicester Square or the music halls? I don't know what the Leicester Square is, but if it's around the 1900s, some music might be quite fine. Oh. The countless music halls of London were one way of passing the evening away. Farces of all styles played a conspicuous part in this week's bill. Darn those farces. On this particular evening, I wandered to Leicester Square, where the more resplendent theater of varieties could be found. Uh, the sh a show at the Al Alhambra caught my eye, though one can never be quite sure of the act until it had been seen. Yeah, that's, that's kind of how entertainment works. Don't know if a show's good until you watch it. It was a silly. Yeah, it was a silly show. I did not stay long. I have no time for silliness. A man like myself who is so bored. <laughs> On the way home, I gave half a crown to a beggar. Because I saw him yawn. He was a fellow sufferer. Okay. I made a vow. I would give the old country another day to fit me into something. If nothing happened, I would take the next boat for the Cape. Okay. An unlikely visit. Resolve to leave England for the Cape. And his outlook changes as a mysterious visitor drops by. Hmm. Well, since it does break the game up so succinctly in these black squares, I think that's how I'll do my recording sessions. So in theory, 5, 9, 10, 14, 17, 19. Yeah, I said that earlier. Just 39 minus 20, 19. <coughs> Almost exactly half. So it looks like this will be a 19-part series, unless I come across one that's, like, obnoxiously short. But otherwise, I guess it's going to be the end of the intro. But I'll see you around, folks, and we'll see how... Interesting things get for Mr. Borg Hane. But anyways, I'll see you around. And as always, friend doggy!